Hello everyone. Welcome again to another program of To God Be All the Glory. Uh, first off, i like to express my thanks and gratitude for Sky Cable for the opportunity to uh, do this wonderful program uh, to my Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, how he has been so good in my life that he's allowed me this opportunity through this station, Sky Cable 13, to glorify his holy and precious name. And I just like to thank Sky Cable so much and, and all the staff here are so wonderful and helpful in doing what they do to help not only myself, but many others to uh, do such a great work in this community. Now, our last time together, we began to talk about uh, why God laid upon my heart uh, this title to this program, To God Be the Glory. And we begin to talk about the glory of God. We begin to see uh, the glory of God is his intrinsic glory. And, and, and that glory flows from the holiness of God because that is who God is. He is absolutely glorious in his being. And that the glory of God connected with his holiness. We saw briefly in Isaiah chapter 6 where the seraphim on above, standing above the throne of God cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. And so when we talked about the holiness of God, the Bible defines God's holiness as the otherness of God, which means that God is distinct and, and, and separated from all of creation because he is creator God. He is in a class all by himself, as stated before, with his infinite perfections, his infinite worth, his infinite greatness. His holiness is who he is, that no one else is. It is the quality of his perfection that, that as stated before, can never be improved upon, can never be imitated, and no one can compare to this great God. In looking at the holiness of God, uh, we see glory. And the glory of God is the manifest beauty, absolutely beauty and beautiful holiness. And it's plain to see. It is God going public with this holiness. It is the way he puts his holiness on display for people, the world the whole creation to see and apprehend. So the glory of God is the holiness of God made manifest. And we learn this because what we saw in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3, where God spoke these words and said that I will be shown to be holy. 
That is, he will be seen to be holy among all those who are near me, God says, and in the sight of the people, I will be glorified. How amazing. And so to sum it up, we begin to see that the glory of creator God is the infinite beauty and greatness of God's manifold or abundant perfections. And therefore, all who God is, is infinitely perfect. All that God does is righteously perfect. All of God's perfections in the person and work of Jesus Christ are beautiful as as they are seen, as they are savored and expressed throughout the lives of his people. We begin to see that the love of God is perfect love, the grace, the mercy, the truth, the hatred of God is infinitely perfect against sin and evil. For again, God is a holy and righteous God. And so when we left off, we begin to look at Romans chapter 1, verse 5. If you have your Bibles, turn with me there or make a note of it. Where Paul says here, we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith. For the sake of his name among all the nations. And so here we see Paul states his goal, why he is an apostle. He states what his ministry is as an apostle. And as an apostle, he states what his hopes are to accomplish all in all the nations by saying, for the sake of the name, for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. And, and surely he means something like I want the nations to see that the name of Jesus is more glorious above all names. As stated before, infinitely more valuable above all names, infinitely more beautiful above all names, infinitely more worthy above all names. And we stated more powerful more loving, more wise, more just, more kind, more truthful than all names in the earth and all religions and all nations. And we know now for a fact that this here, this, that this whole Gospel is about glory, the the glory of Jesus and the name of Jesus. And we also now see that the apostle exists. I exist. You exist. We exist if we are true believers to make God look beautiful in his manifold, abundant perfections. However, the very fact that Jesus is the main point of the whole world shows that the world needs Jesus. You need Jesus. 
I need Jesus as a savior. And so Paul knows that and, and he sets things up and says, everybody needs Jesus. I, I want them to see how great he is. And now he has to go back and show why everyone needs a savior. And that's what Romans chapter 1 through chapter 3 are our need of a savior. Our need of a savior. We're talking about God's glory here. His, his majesty, his beauty, his splendor. Paul begins here, well, we'll start here in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Paul writes, although they knew God, although they, who is the they? All nations and the earth. And Paul is specifically excluding at this point at least the Jewish nation. We'll, we'll see that a little further down the road. But he says, although they knew God, every person on this earth knows God. They know intuitively that there is a God. They can deny it. But God writes, he has written it up on the hearts of all mankind that he is. Although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give him thanks. And, and here lies the problem. And it's a universal problem. Every person listening today, every person on the planet does not glorify God as he deserves. I'll prove it. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. God says here, whether you eat or you drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. I'm going to repeat that. 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all. That is everything. Nothing's excluded to the glory of God. Let us take a deep breath for a moment. God gave you that. Every breath that you take every blink of an eye, every movement in my finger or my arms or whatever health I have, every movement in my legs, God gives it and therefore ought to be glorified. Everything you put in your mouth to eat, everything you drink, everything you do ought to be glorified by the creator God. Nothing is done outside the power of God. Everything moves by the power of God. Every insect, every tree, every flower that grows, where the wind blows, everything is done 
by the power of God. Let's move along. So, that is, they don't acknowledge him as glorious. Although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give him thanks. They did not acknowledge him as God, as glorious. They did not see him as glorious. They did not love him as glorious. They did not treasure him as glorious. They did not follow him as glorious. They did not reflect his glory. We fell every day. You and I fail every day of giving God the glory that he so rightly deserves. And that's the problem. It's a glory problem. Verse 23. Here is what we've done. And here is how we've done it. Romans chapter 1, verse 23. Look at your Bibles. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images. This is the most horrible, outrageous, devastating exchange every one of you has made. Even I. The exchange we have made. This wonderful glory of the living immortal God Uh, to look at that glory to to, to take that glory and swap it out for images what image today in America we normally don't worship carved carved out wood or stone but the most common image that we have traded God for is the one we see in the mirror And it has been that way since Adam and Eve. Remember Lucifer? You will be like God. Don't you want to see God in the mirror? Then do your own thing. He does his own thing. You do your own thing. Now, that's the trick, and every last one of you bought it. I bought it. We were born that way, and everyone listening to this program is like that. You are like that. My way or the highway, God. And there's the problem. We need a Savior, big time. And what about the Jews? Is there a glory problem? Paul's got a long section in chapter 2 on the problem with the Jewish people. We're, We're in this together, both Jews and Gentiles, Gentiles being all the other nations of the world. And that's the whole point that Paul is making here. They they are both under sin. Neither one can boast one over the other. 
Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Read along with me, if you will. And, and this is the climax of, of, of his, uh, his indictment against the Jewish people. A after many indictments leading up to this uh, climax, Paul says in Romans chapter 2, verse 24, as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentile because of you. God's name blasphemed all over the nations by his chosen people, the Jewish nation. In other words, they were not glorifying God's name. They were so living and in such a way, you, you read the prophets, and it is breathtakingly horrible. What, what God's people, the Jews, did to bring shame upon his name. We've done it as Gentiles. They've done it as God's chosen covenant people. And we're all in this together. And now we come to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. So I want you to notice that when Paul goes here and he talks about sin and, and our need for a savior, which he is just about to do, with the glorious cross. He defines sin in terms of glory failure. Now let's see how Paul is thinking here. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Paul says, for all have sinned. What is it? What does Paul mean? For all have sinned and fall short. Literally means lack of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short or lack of the glory of God. Now, what would answer the question, how do you and I lack the glory of God? And the answer would be where we came from. Romans chapter 1, verse 23 explains Romans chapter 3, verse 23. I want you to remember that. That Romans chapter 1, verse 23, explains Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We exchange the glory of God for enmity. We swapped it out. You name it. Meaning, we look at the glory of God. We, we examine this glory. We, we consider the value of the glory of God. We, we acknowledge it, contemplate, and add it up and said, less valuable than money, less valuable than sex, Less valuable than progress. Less valuable than growing a big church. And we trade them. Then we get to chapter 3, verse 23, where sin is defined. And say, this is it. You trade them. You lack them. That's sin. That, that is the root of sin. 
preferring anything over God and his glory, which we all do. Of course, until we are born again. So there Paul has defined sin as lacking or a falling short of the glory of God. Now, as we stay on track with the word glory in chapter four, how do we receive the salvation wrought by Jesus Christ on the cross through the resurrection? How do we receive that glory? That salvation so that it is yours. So there is no condemnation. To all of us who have offended his glory every day of our lives. How do you receive this glorious salvation? And the answer in Romans is by faith alone. like a little child, faith. Why did God choose to do it that way? Romans chapter four, verse 20. Here God is using Abraham as a model of believers who trust in Christ and using Christ as the object of our faith. Here is what it says about Abraham, Romans chapter four, verse 20. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. He grew strong in his faith, giving glory to God. A key reason that God has ordained for you to be saved by faith alone is because when you believe, he is glorified. Do you see that? Believing God and, and, and receiving God, believing him like a little child, puts, puts me in a weak position, puts him in a strong position. I'm the needy one. He's the rich one. I'm the foolish one. He's the wise one. I'm the hungry one. He's got the bread. I'm the thirsty one. He's got the water. And so faith is empty and he is full. That's why God did it this way. It is the best news in the whole world that we only have to be empty of ourselves to be saved. We just have to admit that and then fall down. Can anybody just fall down? Who cannot fall down? Who cannot be weak? Who cannot be empty? There's only one way not to be saved if you decide you want to be God full, strong, and self-sufficient. This gospel is all on Christ. And to him and him alone be all the glory and the honor that is due his name.